Hello and welcome to AWS On Air. My name is Darko and welcome to a show where we talk about the latest and greatest in AWS features and releases. Today, we have something very special. We have two wonderful people from Checkmarks here. We're going to talk to us about some um, code testing, some very specific code testing and uh, something I'm very much interested in. So without further ado, Ori, Mark, introduce yourselves. Ori. Hi, my name is Ori Vendet, and I'm the head of uh, product management um, leading our SAS and engines parts responsible for our flagship six SAS kicks that we will discuss today and some other engines that we are currently working on. Thank you, Ori. Mark, what brings you here? Hi, I'm Mark Pfefferman and I'm a solution engineer at Checkmarks. And so I work with several of our enterprise customers and uh, spend a lot of time with Ori talking about some solutions. Excellent. Thank you very much for being here. Um, before we get into the, the actual point of today, Mark, what is Checkmarks? What, what do you guys do? Checkmarks. So Checkmarks is an application security testing company. We actually are really considered the AppSec uh, leading provider, AppSec testing leading provider. Uh, really, we deliver unparalleled accuracy, coverage, visibility, and guidance that our customers need really to build tomorrow's software securely and at speed. So okay, we really so you... integrate into the SDLC and, and and our mantra is is early and often and trying to provide as much coverage as possible. So my understanding is that you folks, you build software that tests and analyzes code that somebody else writes, correct? That is correct. That's something from, we all from a need. Security, from a security perspective. From a security perspective. And I, I, I fully agree. Security should be part of, 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 you know, of day zero. So once you start writing code, security should be built in. So... Um, excellent thing to have there now one of the things i wanted to talk to you both is a, is about being cloud native a cloud native developer it's uh it's not a new thing but it's something very important uh and and Ori, you, you told me well you told me before that you're gonna tell me what does it mean to do cloud native development i think the major thing about being a cloud native uh, developer is that beside the application source code that let's say traditional developers or traditional development um, was owning. Now we see a whole bunch of new technologies uh, that is being written in code. Uh, we refer to that as everything is code. So we see container, we see orchestrations, uh, we see network as code, policy as code, and also um, infrastructure as code. Right. And just think of how much responsibility we're putting on the developers. Uh, beside application source code. Exactly. And this is areas that they were not used to own previously, and now it's under their responsibility. And each one of those uh, possesses um, quality risk, security risk, and you know, with the speed of DevOps and continuous everything, you can deploy something to, the, to, you know, to production in two minutes and, oh boy, what have I done? Correct, correct. I mean, in the past, like when I used to be a system administrator, we used to deploy infrastructure and then the developers used to deploy applications on top of that infrastructure. Now in the modern cloud native world, developers deploy that infrastructure. So how, how do developers actually do that? How, how, what, how do they deploy infrastructure along with their application? So uh, with infrastructure's code, um, what they can do is simply write like the recipe. This is how I like to explain it. Okay. Um, I, the, it says I need this database, I need this WAF, I need this um, uh, machine, and I need to have those ports open. And magically, you know, infrastructure's code simply deploys it on exactly. the cloud vendor um, that they want. And really, within minutes, uh, you can have uh, your whole infrastructure scaled to the point where you can now have your application running on top of that. Exactly. I, I like. I I am a fan of that. That you can instead of going there and clicking your mouse a thousand times, uh, you can just deploy your infrastructure through de describing it in a as you say a recipe. So your Terraforms, your Pulumis, your CloudFormations, your CDKs. That is infrastructure's code, and it helps you deploy things at scale. Now, when I talk about things at scale, besides it being good at scale. It can also be risky. So, can you tell us a bit more about problems and risks when it comes to infrastructure as code? You know, with great power come, comes great responsibility, as Uncle we like man. to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, just 
I, I will give one simple example. You know, port 22 uh, SSH that is usually being used for a remote debugging. Sure. Um, in a research that was done, it was one of um, the most common ports to be left open. Uh, and what we know is that by having port 22 open, uh, there, are, there are bots that simply scan open IPs, go through all the known ports, and then once they found an open 20, a port 22, they simply brute force and gain access of your um, infrastructure. And, you know, from there, God knows what they can do. And exactly. this is just one simple example. And you can do this mistake in three minutes. And by five minutes after deployment, your infrastructure is gone. So... Exactly. You, a simple simple change in this recipe, in this template you're building can make a change across your entire infrastructure and open it to potential attack. So so it, it's a problem, right? It can be fixed relatively fast, but not as fast as somebody can uh, break through it. So how do developers mitigate this? What do they do right now to test this or whatever they do? So the, the, the nice thing about infrastructure is code that you can treat it just like any other code it means that you know you can um review it you can test it you can have version control yeah. and you can also make sure that you have automated tests running on top of that as part of your life cycle so it's now not only about functional tests or static analysis or open source analysis it's now also infrastructure is code analysis making sure that your infrastructure is configured uh, the right way well, that's wonderful yeah so you take a tool that tests your analyzes your infrastructure code for potential security vulnerabilities let's say and um i think this tool is something you folks at checks check marks have so maybe maybe ori or mark can talk about this thing you mentioned to me before so in, in sorry mark you want to take it no go right ahead i was just going to introduce it as a as a as a platform or the play but we spoke about earlier please go ahead okay so in, in this year, um, as part of our um, commitment to, to security across the different uh, technologies as we just discussed, uh, we introduced KICS, uh, okay. which stands for Keeping Infrastructure as Code Secure. It is an open source uh, project powered by check marks. Okay. Um, and what it does is it scans your infrastructure as code and finds misconfigurations and potential vulnerabilities um, in your infrastructure as early in the cycle as possible. How does it do that? Like, what, what, first of all, let, let me let me ask this question: Which infrastructure code frameworks does it support? Um, the most, uh, the the top ones: um, Terraform, Ansible, CloudFormation, uh, Azure Resource Manager, Docker, Kubernetes, Helm charts, okay, and probably a few that I forgot. So, <laughs> okay, so so how, how how does it actually work? So you you give it this template, this recipe, this Docker file. It, so it, it Sorry, so kicks will so 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 the the instance that we're talking about the uh, the open source version that that okay. is referencing uh, runs on a command line mode. So okay. uh, if you have a repository of code and and there happen to be some Terraform or Docker files or some other you know infrastructure as code files in that repository, then when you run this, say alongside of uh, you know running say our our SCA component where you're looking for open source vulnerabilities. Uh, this would also allow you to look at those configuration files or those infrastructure as code files to determine if there are misconfigurations. So looking for things like HTTP instead of uh, having, you know, SSL TLS enabled on that, or as Ori mentioned, having port 22 left open yeah. uh, on an immutable server where it doesn't make sense anyway, and people are just brute forcing. Um, so and, that's and this developers run. I mean, I, as a, as a, as a, as a people person supporting developers, I see that this, um, being part of a pipeline, for example, within the deployment pipeline, you would test this. Is that, is that a correct statement? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So it, it would run, uh, just as you described, right? So it can be, uh, you could have it part of a YAML file, right? So it could be part of a, a part of a Git repo, uh, YAML file and, uh, or, or even better, it could be, uh, you know, part of, uh, you know, so if, I, I recently was doing some work where I've got some stuff in code commit and uh, and then have that uh, run in code pipeline and uh, part of that pipeline uh, as part of code build running in the pipe code pipeline, it it breaks the pipeline. So right. uh, there, there are ways of configuring it to run that way. Excellent. So Kix is a tool that helps you determine if your infrastructure code is secure. That 
That's a, that's and, and when I say infrastructure code, I mean your cloud formations, your terraforms, your Azure resource managers, your Docker files, your Helm charts, all of those things which help define your infrastructure. And it does this by detecting potential insecure patterns, let's call them, right? Um, it can work on your local machine, I guess. You can point it to a repository and it should also be in a pipeline. Did I say correctly? <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> That is 100% correct. correct. Excellent. Excellent. Well, um, Ori, Mark, before we leave, is there anywhere you can point our, uh, our audience to? Absolutely. So everything that you need is at kicks.io. This is the main website. Um, you can see uh, all the documentation, uh, obviously the repository, all the queries. This is the policies that we run. Everything is open. Um, you can chat with, that, with us on Gitter. You know, you, you have all the channels to see what Kix does and how it can help you. Excellent. So go to kix.io, K-I-C-S dot I-O, and check all of right. these things out. Ori, Mark, thank you very much. Thank you for being on AWS On Air. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Bye.